everyone. Welcome to another episode of Zero Talks by Bev Zero. I'm your host, Kayla Winter, Director of Sales and Winemaking at Bev Zero. I am live from New York today. Uh, came out here to celebrate the Future 40 uh, Wine Enthusiast Awards um, that I was recently granted, which is fantastic. If you haven't checked that out, there are a ton of incredible people that were highlighted in this feature. So check out Wine Enthusiast Future 40. Um, but that's not why I'm here today. Here to talk to some incredible people about non-alcoholic wine in France. Um, so let me try to get them on the cast here. Give me a second. As always, it's going to take me a minute to figure this out. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Invites are sent. Hello. I Hi. did it. <laughs> Hi, Kayla. Hi. Hey, guys. Hi, Sebastian. Hi, All right. So everyone, we're uh, joined by Sebastian Thomas of Moderato, as I mentioned, a French non-alcoholic and low alcohol wine company. Um, and then, of course, we have Arem Aren, our business development manager in Europe. Uh, she's located in Spain, so I'm really excited to talk to you guys both about European market um, and you know the products that are that are out there and, and how everything's going. So, um, yeah, thanks for Same joining. Same here. Same here, Kayla. It's always great to be with you and on a platform that we can talk about no and low. And it's great to connect with Sebastian as well. Yeah, we're very glad to be here too with the specialists and uh, spreading the, the good word around uh, <laughs> non-alcoholic and low-alcohol uh, quality wines. Yeah, Absolutely. that's a very good point. Quality wines. Yeah, great point, Sebastian. Yeah, that's and that's definitely something that Moderato has to offer. Um, I got to taste your wines. I don't think, you'll, I'll ask about this, I don't know if they're available in the U.S., but when I was traveling in Europe, I got to taste them and very impressed. So excited to dive in. Um, first thing, Sebastian, do you mind giving us an introduction to yourself, your personal history and journey, and then, of course, kind of how Moderato got its start? Yes, of course. Well, uh, I'm a, an old entrepreneur. If we, uh, if we compare to the, the French market, I'm 43. I'm uh, the proud uh, father of a, a young boy who's about to turn four and a big, big girl who's uh, seven and a half. Um, I, I grew up in the, in the countryside in uh, an area called Cognac in a family of um, wine grower and distillers. So I kind of fell into, uh, into, uh, into this world as a, as a baby, although I didn't drink alcohol as a baby, of course. Um, and, uh, and then I, I studied in France and then I lived abroad. I lived in the UK for 13 years. Uh, and I spent a number of those years working for a, a French company called Pernod Ricard, um, developing brands um, in the wine sector, in the spirit sector as well, in the UK and then and then globally. Um, and then I did consultancy as well. I uh, arrived in France seven years ago with my young family and uh, um, started to broaden my scope from brand strategy and development to business strategy, e-commerce as well. And, uh, and, uh, and serendipity actually made uh, Moderato possible, as it happens in a lot of those stories. I, uh, I, I came across my, uh, my business partner, Fabien, um, and we were both looking for a new, uh, a new venture project. Uh, he comes from a more um, uh, FMCG background. He's, he's worked in the drinks industry for a number of years developing juice brands and, and so on. Um, and we kind of, um, we both find big fans of, of wine actually, but we thought, well, the, the world is changing. And we were looking at what's, ha what's happening in beers. Uh, and 20 years ago, uh, a good quality no alcohol beer was nowhere to be found. Uh, but today this is obviously a completely different world. And we thought, well, hang on, wine is, uh, is the drinks of, of, of choice for many. Uh, but wine has its own challenges um, ecologically in terms of alcohol percent as well is going up because of climate change, because of various reasons. What could we do actually in wine? Is there, is there, is there a possibility to, to create good quality, low alcohol and no alcohol wines? And it started from there. So we started to explore and, um, and uh, we did the first cuvee with a, a wine grower in the south of France. And then we, we, kind of expanded from there we gathered a lot of experience and we, we rebuilt the whole range 
and we uh, we took the rain met partners Bev Zero to kind of redevelop a, a whole range. First range was five percent in BV, it's still the case, and then we launched our first uh, no alcohol spark wine in June. So that's where we are so far in the, in, in the journey. Yeah, no, it's a lot to a lot to talk about there. Um, I'm super excited to dive into it. First, I'm curious about your time at Pernod Ricard. Did you do any lower alcohol projects there? No, as, as I said, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, young enough to have been uh, working on that. But it's quite funny because I've been connecting uh, since then with a, a, a number of them who have developed uh, no alcohol um, and no alcohol uh, the. Uh, Brands since um, yeah, theaters and uh, and another one called uh, oh, I'm sorry, Paul, if you hear me, uh, it will come back to me. But it's a similar type of spirits again, um, and and it's great to see that the trend coming from people who have worked in this industry for a long time. And I'm kind and are kind of thinking, well, yeah, the world is changing. We want to keep you know the love of the product we like the tastes. But we want to better control, them. and 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 we're not against what exists. We want to expand. I think what what exists actually. Yeah, that's an interesting concept. I have a lot of people that ask me, you know, do do we feel like disruptors uh, in the industry? And um, it sounds like you might have that same thought that I do. Is we're not we're not disrupting the industry as much as we're just adding on to it. We're we're diversifying it, which I think is always something that's. Uh, you know, should be welcomed. Yeah. Yes, we, we're pushing boundaries in a number of ways and, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and some very traditional barriers too. So I think uh, uh, just being able to push those boundaries is a good thing to do. And you need to, in a way, disrupt a little bit. Otherwise, be where you are. Um, but at the same time, we want to build on, on expertise, you know, savoir-faire that has been built for generations and generations and we want to build on that what they are so that's what we want to do um so that's why we say yeah kind of extending or expanding the the wine family as opposed to saying you know wine is dead long live the new wine no it's just it's just a new way of consuming and um, i think overall personally speaking and i think I, I probably speak on behalf of my business partner fabian as well we believe that change will happen if people you know find uh, uh, enjoyment in it uh, as as opposed to being you know contrived doing something and that's what we want to hopefully build and i could if i may add something to that i mean Sebastian, you are french and you know you're born into the tradition of wine cognac and also you come from pernary card and you have a spirits background so you definitely know more than any of us that I mean, wine industry has been always the more traditional one versus spirits. Spirits is always like paving the way in terms of innovation. So what I see, like what we are doing here with the no and low alcohol wine and really good quality wine is kind of it's an innovation in the wine industry, kind of modernization. And also, I think we are trying to reach the younger consumers because, you know, the wine generic wine consumer, wine enthusiasts or educated consumers are more older generations. So younger mm -hmm. consumers are not necessarily into wine. So I think with the Noel Law, we are also like addressing to soft drink drinkers or beer drinkers, not necessarily into the wine industry or wine, you know, habits. So it's like their way of starting in the wine with no and low and then eventually I think they will grow into the wine. So I think I see this in a both ways. Instead of disrupting the wine industry, we are kind of doing the future of the wine industry with to reach the younger consumers. Yeah, it's it's a very good point actually because I think for I wouldn't say it's never happened before, but um, uh, it was maybe more on the spirit side. But for the first time, or maybe not the first time, but. Um, I think in the wine business, we don't necessarily uh, uh, have a look or dive into consumers and what they like and how they consume. And I think uh, at least what we've done with Moderato is from the start, from the very start, the, the, the company was created on the 1st of September 2020. And within three weeks, we, we thought, OK, we want to send out a questionnaire to 
our network and beyond just to put the concept out to them and for them to tell us what they think and how they feel about that. Um, mm -hmm. Try to, to, so some people, I've, I've had this comment not long ago saying, ah, yes, you're just trying to meet a demand. Yes, of course we are. And, and it's actually a very good point. We want to meet a demand that is unmet and that makes sense from a, a personal perspective, almost beyond mm -hmm. the business perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's slightly different because the, the, the wine market has built on you know, the wine makers, uh, their know-how, they produce their own wine with their own style, and then they push it, they push it to you. And then either you, you, uh, you like it, you like the story, you like the wine, or it's not for you. And then they say, it's not for you, then move on, we'll go somewhere else. I think we're trying to do something different. And that's why uh, the younger audience who's become mm -hmm. Uh, demanding as well in terms of what they want to consume uh, is the best um, group of people to, to talk to actually. Sure. Yeah, this is, this is a consumer driven movement. Um, and I, I get that question a lot as well. It's, you know, are, are you guys leading the movement? Are, are you creating a need? And not, not at all. I mean, people are demanding these products and, and we're just trying to rise to that occasion. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the way in which Moderato got its start. So you guys started with low alcohol at 5.5%. And most of our uh, followers are U.S.-based. We have a lot of international as well. But in the U.S., that's not something that's as popular as that kind of low, low, like 5-ish percent range. Um, you know, what drove that choice to start there? Is it very common in France and in, in, in Europe? Or was that something you guys decided to do that was a little new? So it's it's uh, it's it's a very good question. No, it's it's not common at all in France. Um, we see a little bit of traction uh, on uh, on the export markets because there are markets um, uh, in Europe where lower ABV wines are already sold. Uh, Northern Europe countries, um, Belgium, Nether the Netherlands as well. Um, and our choice was so as I said earlier, we. we we looked at what happened in the beer market and then we thought, well, wine, we need to, to break the mold as well. What is, what is the most popular occasion? The most popular occasion is, is around the aperitif for this early evening drink. Um, and wine, in the, at least in Europe or in France, is not that much consumed for that occasion. Having said that, it's an occasion that is growing in importance because the early drink uh, or aperitif, we say, uh, becomes kind of a, a, a casual dinner in a way. So, and it, it's, uh, you know, it's convivial. You, you meet up with your friends or, or your partner and we thought, okay, well, what, and usually the, the ABV drinks, the ABV of the drinks you consume for that occasion, around 5%, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, alcohol long drinks or beer, uh, even cider. And we thought, well, from a quantity perspective, can we, can we go to 5%, which is, pretty much three times less than a, a, a standard red wine today and have mm -hmm. an that is uh, that is really uh, interesting that is uh, refreshing that is that belongs to the wine family so we did some tests and uh, and we were again very happy with what we had again we we had it tried around us and the feedback was very positive so we thought well let's start with that but i agree with you it wasn't obvious from a consumer perspective because uh, consumers today are like they are, they are alcohol drinks as we know them and they are non-alcohol drinks so if you say well why not try a five percent abv wine you have to explain it to the consumers so when they discover it it makes sense but you're not tapping into a specific need as we were saying but to us it was a first step into can we make good quality products at five and also there are consumers who are uh, into no alcohol and then there are some others who still want to have a little bit of alcohol because because they like it and they like it in moderation so that's how we and then but the move was always that the plan has always been for us to to go towards non-alcohol uh ABV, non-alcohol drinks as well so that's why we've just launched uh, our our uh, sparkling um, non-alcoholic wine and that's why we're working on extending that that range too mm -hmm. yeah having options having choices Aram, yeah. can you speak to um you know being more involved in our spanish location uh how many products we do that are zero zero versus kind of a lower alcohol for the european market 
Yes, yeah, so very good question. I mean, in Spain, mostly, yes, we serve to European market, but also we serve to the producers in Europe who are also selling, exporting to US, Canada, or, you know, Asia, Japan is a really important market. So there is a bit of like, you know, a mix. Uh, but however, in in our business model in Europe, like 90, 95% of our business model is based on no alcohol, but it doesn't mean that necessarily the producer is making a no alcohol product, but we are de down to no. And I think in a bit, we can talk a little bit more about the, you know, the alcoholization and how to make a low alcohol wine. But ne- you know, we de alkalize to no low alcohol or no alcohol, and then the consu- the producer creates a low alcohol version of it. But however, well, what Sebastian is doing with Moderato 5 to 5, 5.5, it is not very usual also in Europe because our clients normally they start with zero zero and then, and also depending on their export markets. For example, if they're exporting to UK, the Nordics. Uh, it is in UK, no alcohol is a much growing category, but if they export to US and Canada, they might start with low alcohol. So it's, I think, very depending on your target market and the consumer. And then what uh, mm-hmm. Sebastian was saying before about the consumers, it's very true that consumers are, depending on their occasions, they're switching and then they are drinking in moderation. So mm-hmm. IWSR in this year's report, they categorize the consumers of the no and low alcohol, and they categorize the consumers in four different categories, like substituters. Substituters are normally they drink full strength uh, products, but some depending on the occasion, they do no and low alcohol as well. So there are trialers, they drink full strength alcohol, but they have tried at least once an alcohol product and blenders, they switch in between. And also they, definitely there's abstainers that they don't drink any alcohol. It can be based on yeah. religious regions or pre- being pregnant or designated driver. But what we see is the biggest category is the blenders. So 58% of all the consumers, they have at least consumed a few times no and low alcohol when they are also full strength alcohol drinkers. So that's why I think you guys did a very smart move, you know, to launch with the 5.5, kind of still niche, but you have a broader clientele and or consumer, and then launching a line extension to zero zero, I think it's a very great move and it is not the usual. So you are being, you know, different and you're already differentiating your brand amongst the other players in the industry. Sure. Sebastian, I'm curious to hear we can. Who, who is your target consumer? I mean, who, who's drinking these products? Yeah, t- today it's, um, um, so in, in, in France, it's um, a little bit more uh, email-led, but for, for, for uh, as, as a start, for a very good reason. Um, uh, the uh, women are a lot more open uh, than men when it comes to wines, uh, especially France, because there is not that kind of uh, overwhelming tradition and codes and so on. They, they, they you know, they um, listen to what they feel, what they like. Uh, they, they obviously very discerning. Sebastian, sir, you're saying that because you are with two women here, right? I have to. <laughs> uh, I'm just reading script here. Yeah, yes, I know. You're reading <laughs> no, it. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. We really not that. And it's very true because uh, 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 they're very discerning because um, uh, they want to know what they're consuming. And as soon as they understand what it is, where it's coming from, if they trust it, they try, they like it, then that's it. Uh, and mm. it's interesting. Then they become uh, prescribers as well. So, uh, but, but it's not, again, it's not 80% uh, female, 20% male, it's more 60, 40. So again, it's not, okay. it, it, there's, there's a, a slight bias, but it's not that strong uh, anyway. And it's, uh, I'd say 30 plus today, uh, active uh, with a family or, or early stage, you know, family, um, very busy. Uh, and, uh, and uh, yeah, more and more aware of uh, what consumption 
uh, has as an impact on their health on uh, uh, the world but they want to you know to keep those uh, those nice moments and those nice products actually so that's that's kind of the the the, the heartland of of our consumers um today and i think with the with the uh, the, the 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 sparkling um no alcohol version uh, uh, uh we want to talk to to pregnant women as well for for a very similar reason which is they cannot drink but they want and pregnancy is a very demanding time very intense full of joy but also full of anxiety as well uh and having the opportunity to keep you know socializing those low key moments those drinks you like uh, uh and without feeling like oh i i can't drink or i can have uh, uh, maybe a little bit of this but it's too sweet or we want to bring that to them as well which is to keep the enjoyment within that period which is obviously unique in a lifetime so and we couldn't obviously do it with 5% and with the mm-hmm. no alcohol version and that we hope makes a lot of sense yeah that makes sense do you feel like the consumption is mostly at home or do you, do you have any uh data on that so far it's a bit more at home yes it's that kind of uh 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 unwinding moment towards the end of the day you want you want a glass of something that is that makes you switch from your 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 busy life to your home life to the evening uh yeah. and i remember from my my old days yeah we we had that occasion uh very clear but that was sometimes with a glass of whiskey with a glass of wine uh, and nowadays no you you can't well you can you can always do whatever you want but having a drink of alcohol every evening is not it's not part of the social norm anymore actually sure yeah very interesting um i'd like to go back to kind of the wine making techniques um f- between the two I mean, are you you guys dealkalize the products differently and then even prior to that are you finding different wines whether or not it's going to be down to 05 or to 0 sorry 00 or to 5.5 is there different production processes there well the the um on our side the, the the process is pretty much the same so what we looked for uh was uh, a quality wine that has a special balance uh, you know acidity aromas and i'm not going to use jargon because that's not what we're using it's as simple as that it's balance acidity sweetness in a way and we tried many many uh, uh with the uh, with bev zero uh, to try to see how they were reacting to the the alcoholization process and we picked one that we thought was a very good candidate and then from there so the the the, the selection up front is extremely important to us um uh, and we've tried many many wines we've tried again many more wines recently to try to pick the right candidates uh then there is the the alcoholization process that uh, I am will be able to uh, to to talk about uh, that where we try to preserve as much as we can you know what I, what I call the backbone of the wine and okay. then for us there is a, what we call a, a blending uh parts that that um uh takes part just before the bottling uh where we for the 5% ABV range we we uh, blend with uh, um so full proof wine or the regional wines some of them comes from the south of france for instance to create specific uh, uh, profiles um and then on the on the zero one we the we we kind of we don't do blending as such but we kind of um uh, balancing the profile making sure it has the right you know freshness balance on so that's and we do that with the um um uh, a wine a wine expert actually who's been working in the wine industry for years and years and who's who also has a phd in chemistry so it's very interesting he's taken and he's doing other things today but his take therefore is he's got uh, you know strong wine expertise but a much broader look at it and that's why actually he decided to work with us because he thought that's that's interesting and that's that's a, a big move from the wine world mm-hmm. and having they want to to build on that so uh, his expertise is key for us in that selection part uh, uh making sure that we keep that consistency in the wine and the blending part at stay towards the end 
Sure. Um, yeah, so you guys have, you know, your winemaker on staff, so to speak, to to carry out the rest of that process. Are you adding natural flavors or any kind of other ingredients to your products? Well, the, the, just to go back on what you just said, it's a um, very collaborative process. So we, we're not a big team. So we, we, we're very much involved with my partner in all the, my business partner in all those stages as well. And not just because we want to be involved, but also because you bring, we bring different perspectives, different, you know, palettes. I'm more from, uh, obviously, that background. My partner is, is not from that background, which is great. So, And that's how it makes it um, uh, even more realistic, actually. We were talking about consumers again. This is, And we, we, we're tasting different options around us with the, the, our life partners to get different perspectives. And that's very important to us. We, we don't... We don't own the, uh, the the answer to what the product will be like. We we trust the people around us to help us. Um, but yeah, so, 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 sorry, um, I've lost I've lost my. Uh, my thread. <laughs> you know, that's great. Thank you for giving us a little more insight into your team dynamic. I think that's that's important. And, uh, for any startup and new company, you know, having that team support and all hands-on and, and diversity of thoughts and opinions and palettes, as you said, uh, is super important. And we see that uh, in a lot of the companies we work with. Um, and also, my... here, I just want to add something because since we have Please. been working together with the entire moderate, Moderato team, like there has been also within the Spanish team and R&D team and the production team, there has been like a really great... Uh, you know, syn synergy and, you know, entire moderator, moderator, moderator team are like really detail oriented. So I think it was also like for us also, it's really great to see, you know, a, a client like this who take care of like all the details and the quality because what uh, Sebastian was saying, like really important because before, if you look at like five, 10 years before, maybe not that long, like five, three years even, most of the products available in the category were not really good quality because the people were thinking, okay, I have an additional wine, what do I do with it? And let me dealkalize. No, this is not the way it works. So whatever you will have in the in the wine, any flow, everything will get concentrated because what we do is like we are dealkalizing under high um high degree of vacuum distillation so it concentrates everything so if you have a flow it's going to concentrate if you have you know high acidity it's going to concentrate so first it's really important to start with a really good quality wine and then obviously select the wine according to what outcome you're looking for so Sebastian and the entire team I think they did a great job on that they paid so much attention in the selection and the recipe. So for us, it's amazing to work with a client like that. You know, it makes our job much easier as well. And, you know, much fun. <laughs> That's great. Sebastian, uh, there, are, there are quite a number of dealkalization providers in, in Europe. Uh, what made you choose to work with BevZero? They, they are a few, but in a way, not not that many uh, yet. I think we um, um, there was a, a geographical lot lot to it because uh, uh, the the wine we pick comes from uh, La Mancha, um, so it's great because uh, it's just a few kilometers away from where Bev Zero is located, um, and they have the expertise of the of the area as well so that, that that's a, that's a double kind of expertise the expertise of the area and the expertise of course of the the actualization process um and uh, and yeah we asked a few but when it came uh, uh, when it came to what we were trying to do what we wanted to experiment as well um not that many people could do it um, and we had to experiment a little bit. We couldn't go straight away, as you've just said, I them with, uh, um, okay, we've got this wine, please de-alcoholize it and package it, and then we'll have a wine. No, we didn't want to do that, and we couldn't do that. We had to go for smaller batches and understand how it was, um, you know, coming out as a, as a product. Um, and, 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 and very quickly, yeah, we got on very well in terms of what we were trying to do and what... Bev Zero was also trying to to build in um, in Europe, and um, and it's been very um, yeah, very very positive and uh, and insightful collaboration. Great. 
It's great to hear. Not surprising, though. Our team is great out there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I guess to me, if we're coming from the U.S., where it's pretty much just us, BevZero, doing service providers, the fact that there's a handful in, in Europe makes it seem like there's a ton. But, you no, know, you're right. It's still, um, you know, a burgeoning market, and, and therefore, you know, the needs are, are still um, growing, but somewhat, uh, you know, limited at this time. Um I'd like to to ask you about shipping and the if you have any concerns or any uh, issues that you've run into with shipping dealkalized product from Spain to France. No, it's been a, again as you as, as you've just said that I you have to be very very precise in terms of um, the the quantities in terms of how you condition it, uh, who you're working with as well. Um, and um, because yes, you have to be extra careful because you are you're working with a product that is uh, that is fragile. It doesn't have alcohol as a stabilizer. Um, but again, you know, if you make the if you put the good milestones in the process and you check, you know, the quality at each stage, then then it's it's it works out okay. But it's um, it's not okay. It's done. Then we know how to do it. It's done. We know how to do it. But we need to keep, you know, checking every time we do it because, as, as I've just said, it's a it's a fragile product. Um, uh, but yeah, so it's um, it's a combination of having the right the right partners and being yeah being very um, uh, very picky in a way in, to, in in the way you do it. Yeah, definitely. Um... There, we had a question that I might have missed. Um, the question was about uh, whether the process made from grape source from cooler climates, like the south of France, uh, is different. But it sounds like you guys are dealkalizing wine from Spain, but then afterwards blending in wine from France. Is that correct? Uh, in some products of the range, yes, we 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 do so. Yeah, it's. Um... Again, to us, is trying to find the right the right wines with the right balance. And the more you, you try different wines, the more there are wines that could be very nice as a, you know a, a, an everyday or weekend wine, but that wouldn't work in the dehydration process. So it's uh, we're investigating that as as we speak. Um, but it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's in a way it's quite funny to see how different it behaves once you've dealkoholized it because uh, the alcoholizing it shows you as as I said the kind of the backbone of the wine and sometimes you're you're surprised. Yeah, sure. and also it, just the addition for it, the difference between cool climate and warm climate wines. Um, so when we dealkoholize, obviously we are kind of deconstructing the wine. So what happens, like the, all the elements become really very important. So the cool climate wines, normally they would have higher acidity and lower pH and versus the warm climate wines. So then when you concentrate it, the, the alkalization concentrated, your acidity will be concentrated and pH will go low. Obviously, pH going low is good for us because it also gives stability and acidity going high is also giving stability to, to the product. But it can be <laughs> off balance because as Sebastian said, you are removing very important part from the backbone, which is alcohol. So the key is having a balanced product. So that's why all these parameters are really important. We don't want to go really very high or very low on the parameters with the incoming wine. Sure. No, oh, thank you. And also um, another addition to that. Sorry, I just like yeah, uh, yeah. remembered any other like very important point. I think it's very current point with the warm climate wines, not only the warm climate, but generally with the global warming and the climate change, obviously warm climate wines have higher alcohol. So in terms of that, maybe you don't, not necessarily for the low and low alcohol products, but the higher alcohol pr products now lately needs more alcohol adjustment. Um, so it can be easier to work with them or it can be even trickier because the higher alcohol you have then the dealkalization might be more difficult. So there are many variables in the in the whole process. Yeah, that's not just a easy answer. <laughs> I think it's 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 very wine dependent and dependent on that lot and that vintage and and that vineyard. Um, and so that's why I think working with experts and and having a collaborative team is a is a good combination for success. 
Yeah, and, and I'd say uh, this is what makes it fascinating as well. You know, this is, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is what I enjoy because you, you, you're learning actually, and you're learning. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a natural product, and it behaves in certain ways, and therefore you have to experiment and, and, and create and deconstruct and, and see how it works. And it's, yeah, it's fascinating in many ways. Sure, I agree. <laughs> it's definitely a fun, a fun job to have. Um, well, thank you so much for for giving us all that information. I'd love to know a couple of things. First, what's next for Moderado? Well, let's uh, have a, a cognac in the future. <laughs> the uh, the first step, as I as I um, 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 mentioned very briefly earlier, is to work on the non alcohol range. Um, mm -hmm. Um, it's obviously a tougher challenge because you remove all the alcohol sure. but as I've just said it's a fascinating one uh, but that's that's our priority now we, we, we seem to have a robust 5% ABV range um, we want to, to be stronger on the non-alcoholic range and again you know with a, a, a product positioning that is within the wine the wine family um, and there aren't that many products that are in that area today um, and, um, and, and yes, so we want to, we want to work on that as, uh, uh, well, we are already working on that. This is, this is the next step to develop that within the next, um, the next few months now. Mm -hmm. And you already have one zero zero product on the market and you're developing more. We have, yeah, we have a sparkling one and, uh, we're looking into, uh, steel wines as we, as we speak. So that's the, that's the first step as to. Other, you know, spirits and so on. It's a, it's a bit early. You know, we are, we are we are an extended wine family brand, and uh, and that's what we want to uh, what we want to build really because there is a, and we don't want to be alone. You know, we need, we want to build a category. We want to build. You know, we want to give choice and not give choice if it's only you. So that's that's what we hope as well. Actually, I have a curiosity as well. We have never talked about it, Sebastian, but. Are you planning to extend the range in different formats within like no and low alcohol, maybe at some point doing cans or different or smaller, like one serve, single serving size bottles? This is, this is something we have, uh, we have in mind. I wouldn't say we're going to do it yet, but it, 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 it would make sense on some of the wines definitely and in, in, in some markets. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think this would be great from, a, again, from what we've described as, a, as an occasion, the way it's consumed, breaking some of the barriers. Uh, uh, um, it makes a lot of sense, I think. Um, but there are, there are a number of questions as to uh, how we do it, the stability of the product and so on. But there are, yeah, we want, we want to try to investigate that a bit more because it's, um, it makes a lot of sense, again, from a consumer perspective. And, and there seem to be in France, it's a bit early, but in other markets, they seem to be responding well to other formats. So, yeah. Yeah. And also yeah, because I think the that's... products are very occasion-based as well, like, like the single mm -hmm. serve and the cans also like expands the possible occasions that you can drink exactly. those products. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think it no longer needs to be something you consume at home. Now you can take it to the beach, take it to a party, take it you know somewhere, but just have enough for yourself. And the plan, yeah, the plan for us is again to do it in a, in a, in a, in a qualitative way. To be to 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 focus the focus on the quality is absolutely critical to us. So again, you know, it's about being able to develop the product to the same standards as what we've done to date. Sure. Great. All right. Last question: Where can uh, listeners find Moderato? Where can we buy it? It depends where where you based. So in the, in France, we sell uh, through our website. Uh, we uh, we started a partnership with uh, Cavavin, which is uh, one of the big uh, specialist chain um, in France. Uh, and in a number of independent shops and, and restaurants, you've got the list on our website. And then we, we we've uh, we've got um, started to ship uh, a few bottles around uh, around the world. We're not yet in the US. Uh, we need to we need to to map out a very specific plan because it's a it's a very big market and it works sure. one state by state. So we want to 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 do it um, to do it step by step. Um, mm -hmm. 
that's that's where that's yeah that's where we are today we shipped uh, bottles to canada to bahrain uh we're in discussion with uh, with other markets in in um, in um, in asia and in uh, in in europe as well so where it would make a lot of a lot of sense great well i can't wait to find it in the us i will be your first customer <laughs> well i would love to uh, to 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 find a and an easy way to do it, but it uh, it takes time again. But um, no, we we're mm -hmm. hopeful. We had some uh, within the you know within the, the, the two years we we created the, the brand and the products. There's definitely been a, a, a deep you know market change and consumer behavior change sure. to those products, um, and that's uh, and it's a very positive uh, sign really. Next time I come to US, Kayla, I'll make sure that I'll bring a full suitcase <laughs> of Monorato. <laughs> Brilliant. I'll be very excited. Yeah. Not only is it a great product, I, I the, that that target ABV, that 5.5%, no one's doing it here. Uh, and I think it's it just makes so much sense. If you want to imbibe, but just a little bit less, keep more control, but still, you know, feel something. Um that, that's your answer. It's why, it's why everyone gravitates towards, you know, the White Claws and seltzers. It's that low alcohol um, that you can drink more and more and, and, you know, not feel like you've had six glasses of wine. Um, so, great. I'm looking forward to it, Arem. Bring that suitcase. Sure. <laughs> I just need to book my next trip to U.S. <laughs> oh, can't wait. All right. Thank you guys so much. Um, so, Sebastian Thomas of Moderato, thanks so much. And Arem Aren of BevZero. Uh, it's been great talking to you guys. I uh, can't wait to see what else is, you know, up and coming for Moderato. Um, and if any anyone in our uh, anyone in the UK or Europe, if you can get a hand on uh, Moderato, I suggest you try it. Great product. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. It was great to see you talk to you and same Sebastian. Yeah, very good uh, catching up, Rem, and uh, very good talking yes. with uh, with both of you. <laughs> Great. Great. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks to all the listeners. We'll see you next time on Zero Talks. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.